What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here, and in today's video we're going to be talking about tapered walls in Revit. Those are walls that have a different thickness along the height of the wall, so it can be wider at the bottom and then thinner at the top or the other way around. Uh, it does have some uh, nice capabilities and it's something that's really important and it's also really important for the latest version of Revit. So if you don't know, this is an option that's only available in the latest release of Revit, which is Revit 2022. Uh, and if you haven't heard about this yet, uh, I suggest you check out my video where I go in depth and explain all of the new features and functions that are available uh, in this latest version of Revit. I'm just going to include that video over here in the cards. Or is it here? I don't know. But anyways, it's in the cards there, also in the description. Uh, so if you want to learn about all of the new features. In this video, we're just covering the tapered walls, how to set them up, what are all of the kind of functions and options that we have, all of the little settings, and also how does that interact with some other things that, uh, well, have to interact with the walls, uh, such as doors, windows, and also attaching floors to those types of walls. That's also quite important. Uh, so that's what we're covering in today's video. Uh, now, if you want to learn Revit in depth, I suggest you check out my website, balkanarctic.com. That's going to be the first link just below this video. Uh, there I have many different courses, starting from a beginner to intermediate level course, and then also many other uh, advanced uh, level courses uh, that concentrate on numerous different complex topics in Revit. So if you're serious about learning Revit, check it out. As I said, first link just Below the video. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit. Uh, now, by the way, oh, one quick thing. Uh, do you like the highlighted cursor? Uh, so I've just set this up uh, just to make it a little bit easier for you to see the cursor. And please tell me in the comment section below, do you prefer this or would you prefer just nothing? So would you prefer this or having it highlighted like so. Anyways, uh, let's get into the uh, tutorial. Uh, so for the tapered wall function, uh, what we have to do is obviously, well, first place a wall. And now once you go here to the wall tool, WA is the shortcut, then you can obviously go into properties. And I'm just going to select one of the walls. Uh, let's select the uh, brick on metal stud. Okay, so uh, here we can just place a wall, click once, click again, and the wall is placed. Hit the escape key a couple of times and then let's open up the 3D view just to see what we have here. So this is the wall in question. Uh, now in order to make this wall tapered we do have to make a couple of adjustments. Uh, so first perhaps not related to the tapering is I just want to change the top constraint up to level 2 just like so. And then for the tapering of the wall you select the wall you go here into the properties and then you have the cross section option. Now, this is something that has been added uh, with the latest release of Revit. Previously, you had the option to have it vertical or sloped. Now, here for the cross section, it can either be vertical, sloped, or tapered. Now, obviously, we want to go with tapered, and then it's going to give you a warning. This wall type is not compatible with the tapered cross section. Uh, the reason for this is because none of the existing layers have been set to be variable layers. So you know how with floors uh, or uh, roofs, if you want to have a flat roof that has a little bit of slope, you have to have a variable thickness uh, layer. And then Revit can recognize that that layer can be adjusted in order to make it sloped. We have to do the same thing here with this wall. We have to select the wall, go into Edit Type, go into Structure, go into Edit, and then here we have to go and find the variable parameter. See, here it says Variable. And then you have to check which one of these layers you want to make variable. Now, in most cases, you're going to go with the structural layer or something like that, or perhaps some sort of a substrate layer if you have that. So uh, I'm going to check that. Now, something else that you will notice is that you cannot check two at once. So it's only going to allow you to have one uh, variable layer. So just keep that in mind. And once that is checked, when you OK out of that, you'll also see that here under construction, we get a new tab that says cross section properties. So you can actually assign the taper of the wall here. Now, this is something that I'm going to be talking about a little later on because it's a little bit different than the regular taper. So let's just hit apply. Okay. 
and escape out of this. Okay, now if I select this wall, and then if I go to the cross section in the properties panel, and instead of vertical, go to tapered, now as you can see, it's going to allow me to have this tapered. Now, before we can apply any angles, uh, we have to override the type properties. So as I've shown you here, we have the type properties angle, and it's currently set to zero. So we can just override that, and then we can assign angles here. Now you have the exterior angle, in this case, that's going to be this side here on the outside, and then we have the interior side, which is going to be this here. Uh, so if I just go and set an angle, so let's go with three degrees, Hit apply. As you can see, it's going to go out like that. We can make it even larger for demonstration purposes. See how it tapers out here. Uh, now, something that you'll notice, obviously, you don't want to go too far with this. Usually, you're just going to be playing around with one, two, three degrees uh, in most cases. So that's just something to keep in mind. Anyways, uh, to show you this a little bit better, let me go here into level one floor plan, zoom in, and create a cross section running through this uh, wall. Double click here on the section head, and then let me undock that. Oops. Okay, there we go. And then dock it here in the edge. Perfect. Okay, so uh, let's also show the layers. Perfect. Okay. So if I go back here to the 3D view, this is the wall that we have, and then we can see it here in the in the section view off to the side. Now, once you taper the, the wall, you can obviously do it on the outside, which is this here, and then you can do it on the inside. So here I can taper this, I don't know, five degrees on the inside, and as you can see, it's going to go again towards the inside as well. Uh, keep in mind that you can also have a negative angles, so I can go minus one degree, and then it's going to go to the inside. Now, because we have the taper out, I can even go minus probably four or five, and it's still going to go there, yeah. Even minus eight, and that's just going to turn it into a sloped wall, I guess. Now let's go back to zero. Uh, now, if you want to have it tapered where it's smaller on the bottom and uh, larger on top, you can do that. So I can go minus one here, and then as you can see, it kind of tapers out on top. You can see the same thing here. Uh, now, something that you'll notice when it comes to this tapering of the wall, let's go back to five degrees. Yeah. Okay. So if I just show you by going here to the quick access toolbar, going to the measure tool, if I measure the layer here on top, it's going to display 151.3. Uh, now that is the thickness of the layer of this main structural layer that has already been set. So if I hit the escape key a couple of times, select the wall, go into edit type, go into structure, go into edit. Here, you're going to notice that it says 152 for the thickness. So that, that's, that's that <laughs> uh, thickness. Now, if I go to the measure tool and measure at the bottom, obviously that's going to be much larger. So what we can learn from this little uh, demonstration or this little measuring, uh, we can learn that uh, Revit is going to keep the top of the wall at the assigned uh, width, but the bottom will kind of change according to the according to the angle of the taper. Now, if I go back here to the properties uh, uh, for this wall, so select the wall, go here to the properties, and if I change the taper to go to the inside, so minus one, see how then it goes to the inside. If I were to, to go to the measure tool and measure that, it's going to display again 152, but on the bottom, it's obviously going to become smaller. So even if you make it larger or smaller using that angle, it's always going to say, uh, keep the same thickness on top. Now, the reason for this is because, well, we actually have a parameter. If I go here into edit type, uh, while the wall is selected, you can see that under the cross section properties, the width measurement is set at top. Now, if I were to change this and perhaps say the base and hit apply, you will see how it kind of became thicker. Let me do that again. So just look at this wall when I change it to top, hit apply, see how now it goes to the inside. And now when I go to the base, hit apply, it goes out like this. Now, if I go again to the measure tool and then measure that again from here to here, you can see that it kept the same thickness now on the bottom, but on top it changed. So if I measure here on top, it's set to 
221. Uh, and now this is because we have that negative angle. Now if I were to set this to plus 1, now, as you can see, it tapers in such a way where this layer becomes smaller on top. So this is just something to keep in mind, that depending on where you set this up, uh, this uh, measurement with measurement at, that's going to determine does your wall become thinner or thicker with the changes of the angle. Now, also we have the uh, bottom one. So the base one basically says it's the host level, in this case level 1. Now if I change that to the bottom and hit apply, nothing really changes until I extend this wall. So once I extend it like this, what that's going to do is it's going to keep this distance at the bottom at 152, but this here it's going to become smaller. So now it moved down to the bottom. If I change it back, so if I just go back to select the wall, change this back to the base. Now it changes and here if I measure again it's going to be 152 here and then on the base it's going to obviously be larger in this case. There we go, 170. So just keep in mind uh, that that's how Revit will figure out where to keep the kind of the, the assigned thickness and then the rest will change according to the angle that you assign. In most cases, you're just going to keep it at the top. Uh, that's at least my opinion, but yeah, that's really up to you. Let's go back here to five, perhaps here to three, apply. There we go. We have now a nice thick wall. Uh, now, one more thing that I would like to talk about uh, when it comes to these walls is a an interesting behavior. So if you decide to create a new wall here in Revit and you go to walls, here in the properties, you can have the cross section be at vertical. And then if you go to the walls, you can expand and you can take a look at all of the walls that you have. But if I go back here and change the cross section to tapered and hit apply, if I open this up, it's only going to show me my exterior brick on metal stud wall. The reason for that is only this wall has been edited so it has that variable thickness layer. Now if I escape out of all of this and then go back here to vertical, apply, now I have all of the walls. Let me go here to the generic 300 one, go into edit type, go into edit, make this one variable, okay, apply, okay, and then let's open up another one, I don't know, the block work 140, edit type, again make that one variable as well, click OK, apply, OK. Now when I change this to tapered, it's going to display those three walls because they have kind of the settings required to make them tapered walls. So that's just something to keep in mind. If you accidentally leave this at tapered and then you want to select a different wall, you might be a little bit confused, like where's the rest of my walls? It's only due to that uh, setting. Uh, now moving forward, Let's select the generic 300 millimeter type and then let's go into here into edit type and let's play around with the cross section properties. Now here we have the same ability to set the angle as we did here in the properties panel uh, but the difference is these are type parameters and these here are instance parameters. What that basically means is this if you set this it's going to stay the same for every, uh, inst oh, for every wall that you have. But if you set the parameter here, it's only the wall that's selected at this point. So what does that mean? Well, if I set, set this to, I don't know, like three inside, three on the outside, hit apply, okay. Now, if I want to place this as a tapered wall, I can just start placing it. And as you can see, it's going to be tapered. It has that taper. Now you can see that that angle has already been set up here and you can only override it by clicking here and then you can change that angle. So you can change, I don't know, like this to I don't know, six and this one to four, apply, okay. And then you can set the wall and it's going to have a different thickness or perhaps let's set this one to zero just so we can differentiate between these two. Now, if you go again to the wall, go to that same 300, uh, millimeter generic wall, go into edit type and you change this to five and then this one to zero. Let's see what happens when I click OK. See how this wall changed and this one didn't because this one kind of kept its own instance override, but this one is following the type 
prop type parameters and that's why this here changed so it's just something to keep in mind uh, if you have a wall that you know it's always going to be tapered i do suggest you check that option uh, here in the edit type and if it's a wall that's only going to be tapered in one or two places uh, or instances of that wall then i guess you just start off with a regular wall you place it wherever and then only the kind of the the instance that's supposed to be tapered you just select that one you override it here and then you add that taper and there you go now moving forward one really important thing to mention is that if you go to here to the wall tool and then uh, let's go to the stacked wall here on the bottom and then let's place one for the stacked wall you don't really have the option to make it uh, tapered as you can see it's just not going to allow you it's not something that's available with the stacked wall it doesn't have that option so just uh, keep that in mind unfortunately we cannot stack uh, tapered walls in Revit next let's see the relationship between uh, sloped or tapered walls and uh, floor boundaries so if I decide to go here into level 2 floor plan or no let's go into level 1 floor plan I'm going to select this wall that already has a taper to it so let's go to walls uh, let's go to the uh, brick on metal stud I'm going to go here and yeah let's uh, just assign something like I don't know like five degrees on both sides just to make it or let's go even with 10 uh, just to make it a little bit easier to see okay hit apply okay and then here let's set this to tapered and let's create a room now you can see that they're making it unconnected and making allowing it to go up to uh, 800 8000 millimeters that's okay next I'm going to move to level 2 this is where we have that wall and now if I go here to the floor tool and use the pick walls function I can go and click like this and it's basically just going to be placing that in oops let's go back so it's going to be placing those lines inside of those walls and now if I hit finish uh, let's see no okay let's go to the 3d view this is what we have see we have that floor inside perhaps in the shaded we can see that better see now if I select this wall and move it out you will see that the floor will follow that wall so even though this is a tapered wall that floor will still try to follow that uh, boundary of the wall so it's just something to keep in mind and if I select this and now go into edit type and if we change this to I don't know like three and then hit apply okay well it's still going to be there that floor is still there uh, we can even go and select a few of these walls and let's try making them vertical well still that floor is going to follow that and if we go here into level 2 see that's how far that uh, floor will go inside of that wall so actually the, the floors do follow the tapered walls fairly uh, okay fa fairly decently uh, moving forward and finally the, the last thing that they want to talk about are the openings now this is probably the most troublesome part of the tapered walls because there isn't really a good way to uh, incorporate your openings like doors and windows in these types of walls so if I go here to the door tool I can just select that and then I can place a door here in this wall see we have that door here so for that door uh, if I zoom in you can see that the frame will still kind of try to follow the thickness of the wall even though that thickness well it simply isn't there uh, and it's still going to look like this it looks kind of silly uh, all the same thing goes here in the section view so this is what that looks like I don't know it looks kind of odd definitely the frame of the door shouldn't go inside of the wall like this so in most cases the, the, the doors and windows aren't really going to work uh, very good with tapered walls uh, you do have a function where you can select the door and then go into the properties panel and we have the orientation which you can change to slant along exterior or interior side but that just makes it even worse see how it tries to follow that exterior line but then it tilts so far that here we have a little wall edge 
Same thing goes here. It looks really odd and it's just not something that you want to see. And also you can uh, slant it along the interior. Again, it makes the same issue, just the other way around. So uh, uh, what I suggest to do is either just leave the doors vertical or better yet, uh, just uh, get rid of the doors. And then what you can do is you just go here in level one, uh, go to wall opening, you click, you create a wall opening. Okay, this one might be a bit too large. Okay, yeah, just like that. So you create a wall opening like this. Let's go to 3D view. Uh, you can adjust it to go all the way down here. So just go down to zero, and then the top can be whatever you want it to be. So you just create a wall opening like this, and then you go to component, uh, model in place, and then you would simply model a uh, door that would fit this. So you would go here to doors, click OK, doors one, and then you would just go and perhaps create an extrusion, uh, set to work plane, pick a plane, OK, and then you pick just one side, and then you can just use pick lines to kind of create that frame side by side. Let's make it minus 20. See, now here we have kind of a door frame and you can kind of model a custom door that perfectly fits into this. So you can have something like that. You can have the frame on the outside as well. Just go here to set work plane, pick a plane, okay. And then you pick this face here and then you can just go picking lines like so. Give it an offset, I don't know, like 100. Like that. I don't know, I'm just showing you here what you can do. Not saying that you have to go this way, but uh, it is you know, the, the only option that they see working and making a smooth door is to create that kind of custom frame, custom door. Uh, and in, in reality, you're not really going to have many of these doors on tapered walls. You might have one or two in your project, and I think it's worth the effort to go and model that as a custom component uh, instead of working and uh, with the regular doors, because as I've shown you, they, they do look terrible. So see, comparing this to this, this already looks better. And it, with just a few more steps, it could look really, really good. Obviously, you can create a whole separate door family that would follow kind of the, the taper of the wall that you require. Anyways, that's uh, pretty much it for this uh, video. I hope you have learned a lot about tapered walls. It's not as simple as just tapering the wall. It's uh, making it work with kind of the rest of the Revit model. So that's why we have to cover everything. Uh, that's why this video is so long. Uh, but anyways, I hope you have enjoyed it. I hope you have learned something new. Uh, tell me in the comment section below, do you like this tool? And also, uh, please check out my courses. Again, first link in the description. Uh, that's BalkanArctic.com. That's my website. Over 100 hours of content there. So uh, make sure to check that out. Uh, if you're serious about learning Revit, that's the place to go. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this video. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share this video, and I'll be back with another Balkan Arctic tutorial in a couple of days. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.